Good afternoon, everyone. This is Queenie Clem with Queenie's Book Talk and Reviews, and I am your literary ambassador. And today I have author Maurice Gray on my channel today. Welcome, Maurice. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Tell us a little about yourself. Well, I'm completely surprised to realize that I've been in the literary game for, it'll be 20 years in October. Wow. I am shocked. Where did all this time get to? Mm -hmm. But back in October of 2000 is when I released my first novel, To Whom Much Is Given. And all is it, I'm still here after mm -hmm. all this time. Mm -hmm. okay. I, I think I write, I do some editing for other authors. And mm -hmm. basically, I, was, I really enjoy the literary world. Okay. What is your genre? <clears throat> Christian fiction. Christian fiction. Um, do you think you will ever write in another genre? I've thought about it. I mean, I read pretty much everything. I might mm -hmm. consider science fiction at some point. I've thought about trying my hand at a mystery. But I'm not too sure how well that would go. But I can give it a shot. Mm -hmm. I, I am thinking about trying, just branching out a little bit, but we'll see. I mean, some of those genres actually can be done under the umbrella of Christian fiction. So I might try to do it that way. Okay. How has your writing journey impact your faith? I think they both helped one another. I mean, I chose this particular genre because it made the most sense for me. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm already living it. I'm already enjoying that particular lifestyle. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking, why would I write anything else but Christian fiction? Mm -hmm. Once I realized that that was an actual genre, I was off to the races. I didn't even know that was a thing until, I, until somewhere in the middle of the 90s when I read Frank Peretti's book, This Present Darkness. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Once I realized that there actually was such a thing as Christian fiction, I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. that's what I need to be right. Yeah. And, what, and it was a good feeling to know that what I was working on actually fit in some genre. I was kind of concerned that people wouldn't want to read anything, anything from a Christian mm -hmm. viewpoint. Well, you, um, <clears throat> let's talk about your books now. What book would you like to talk about? Well, the most recent one for me, the most recent release is called Like a Brother. Mm -hmm. It was it came out in 2016. I've been working on other ones to follow that one since, but right now that's the newest mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. You want to tell us a little about it? Sure. I, mean, I got the title from a phrase that I've been hearing pretty much all my life. I've heard it directed at many people, including myself, mm -hmm. and I've heard it under many contexts. So when I came up with this particular story, like a Brother fit as a title in many ways. It's a story about family. My main character, Jeremiah, he is the oldest of a family. They're not blood related, but they've all adopted each other. And at different points during their teenage years, the same couple mentored them. And they got to know each other through that process. And since most of them really don't like the families they were born into, they chose mm -hmm. each other as a family. And as the oldest, he feels a responsibility to all those that are under him. He makes sure that if they need something, they'll try to provide it. He's always there giving advice, he's always giving his input. And where the book picks up, he's actually overdoing it. It's, it's gotten to a point where how much is too much? When is, is it, when, is, when, do you, when do you have to scale it back some? Mm -hmm. Are you over, is he overdoing it? Is he doing too much for all of his adopted siblings? The, when does it stop and how do you stop if you don't even want to? So I took it from that perspective as him being the oldest brother in this adopted family and also from the more familiar form of like a connotation of like a brother where mm -hmm. say, many of men, including myself, has heard a woman say, oh, I, like, I don't see you that way. I see you more like a brother. Mm -hmm. brother. Yeah. Got that thing. And he's got that situation with one of his adopted siblings. She won't even acknowledge the fact that, that they do have feelings for each other. I mean, it kind of touched on it maybe years and years ago, but she won't even touch on it ever since. She just keeps on availing herself of services like a big brother. Mm -hmm. And if she needs something, if she needs moral support, she needs emotional support, he's always right there. But she won't even open the con reopen the conversation about, mm -hmm. like about their once, only once acknowledged feelings for each other. So that's like a brother from both standpoints. Right? Point of him being the oldest brother in the family, and then from the point of 
from the more familiar connotation, the romantic version of it. Mm -hmm. uh, that's where he is when the, when the book opens, trying to figure out, okay, what do I do with all this? Yes. Something has to change, but he's not he's not sure what how to do it, how to, how to go about it. He's in, and how to, how to get out of the rut he seems to be in. Okay. When did you want to, when did you know you wanted to, be, to become a writer? Hmm. I think I've always wanted to try my hand at it, but I didn't really try it until the year I graduated college. And I had this idea for a short story that just wouldn't leave me alone. So I figured, okay, let me try to write this. And then I quickly found out that I don't do short writing very well. I really had to work at making, making like a brother into a novella because I had a lot to say. The short story quickly turned into a couple of hundred pages worth of novel. So when I finally fleshed it out, I figured, okay, let me see if I can do something with this. And somehow it got into the hands of a literary agent, took time out of his busy day to let me know that it wasn't very good, but he explained to me in detail what I could do to make it better. Yeah. And that helped a lot. And from there, I started trying to figure out, okay, what else, what can I do to step this up? I took the advice that he had given me that I started finding out about writers' conferences. There was one not too far from where I live. I live in Delaware. And at the time, there was a writers' conference being held at, at the Sandy Cove Christian Conference Center in Northeast Maryland, which is not that far from me. So I started going to that conference. I started meeting people there. Like other, like there were authors, there were editors, there were mm -hmm. representatives from publishing companies, literary agents. They were all there to help people like myself who were trying to get into the literary game. I didn't make a lot of contacts there. I was able to fine tune the book. I got a lot of help from one author in particular, Gail Roper, who's very well known as a Christian romance author, romance and mysteries. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I love her work. Now that I've had the chance to, I, I started reading it after I, I met her and she gave me such great advice on how to get my own book a lot more, a lot better. Because the way I had it at first, I couldn't figure out what was wrong with it? Maybe it just wasn't starting out too well for me. To me, I was like, well, this looks okay, but I think it could maybe be better. And she gave me the best advice I've ever gotten as a, as a writer. Start with some kind of action. Because what I had was something that very wordy, flowed pretty well, but it was kind of boring to start a book that way. That, I had to push that back later and start the book with some kind of action sequence. Mm -hmm. And when I did, it was, it was as simple as, I, as, I guess my two main characters running into each other at the supermarket. And for that particular book, that's what's to whom much is given. Mm -hmm. it's a very simple concept for me. The, the idea I had was, okay, let's say there's this man who's been dreaming about a particular woman, never seen her before. And then he goes out somewhere and then he runs into it. So I just took it from there, <clears throat> excuse me, to see what I could do with that. Mm -hmm. And that was supposed to be a short story. Like I said, it turned into a couple of hundred pages. Okay. Yeah. And that really got me into, okay, this is the kind of writing I want to do. I want to... Of course, I want to stay with Christian fiction. I want to do, most of my work is going to be deal with relationships in some form, whether it's romantic relationships, whether it's family relationships, friends, what have you. And a lot of what I've written, that's all of it basically in, in one book. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I knew back in, in 1990 that I wanted to write, but it took me 10 years from starting that short story that turned into mm -hmm. a novel to actually having it out in October of 2000. Okay. What inspires you to write? I would say, like, I, I can see story ideas in pretty much everything. I love to read. I've always been a big time reader. So, having enjoyed a whole lot of books over the course of my life, I've always thought that, well, I, I know what a good book is supposed to be like for me. And then when I see things, I'm like, you know what, I could do something like that, but I don't want to do the same thing that this author did. Let me see what yeah. I could do with my own ideas. So, I, I've gotten inspiration from some of the books that I've read, just from Sometimes I, I might see people talking way off in the distance, can't hear them, not trying to eavesdrop it up, just by their body language, their expression, whatever. I, I kind of wonder, what are they talking about? Talking about. Mm -hmm. I can get an idea, like, well, maybe they're discussing something, something simple as, well, can I have your recipe for, is it for brownies? Or they, maybe they could be arguing about mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. Or maybe they could be trying to figure out what to do about a sick relative. There's so many options. Mm -hmm. That's just the way my mind works. I'll see something, I'll never know when something's going to set me off into, well, what, well, what's going on? What if this or what if that? What if it's a big question for me? Mm -hmm. What if they're arguing about something? Things like mm -hmm. that. That was yeah. set me off in the whole flurry of writing. How do you feel about reviews? I have been blessed to have a lot of good reviews over the years. 
I can only think of one really bad one, and that was a person who was basically just going through the, they through all the books they could find, is giving bad reviews to everybody. I think it's really important that authors put their books in the hands of people who are willing to read and review for mm-hmm. them, give them an honest opinion on what they see. It can only make you better. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, what is your testimony? Well, I'd have to say that, that I think God put writing in me for a reason. Mm-hmm. I would have to say that without this, I, I, I don't know, I, I think I'd be kind of floundering my way through life trying to figure out what is it I'm supposed to be doing? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, this, I mean, I've always been a big time reader, but I wasn't sure where that was going to take me until that idea for the short story hit. So now, I think writing gives me a purpose. It gives me a way to reach to a whole, to a whole lot of people who I might never meet in person, but who I, I feel like I've got a lot of stories to tell and I can share them. And they do this vehicle, through writing books, through even writing articles or things like that. So... I, I feel it's a, it's a true blessing that God has chosen to give me creativity and then push me to, like, to find a way to use it instead of just sitting back and doing nothing. Mm-hmm. I remember when I first got out of college, like, like many people, I mean, I grew up in church, but college didn't have a whole lot of time for going to church because I was on my own. I was grown. I didn't have to. So didn't do a whole lot of church in college. Did I did go, but the habit was in me, but... Mm-hmm didn't really get into a relationship with Jesus Christ until I got out of college, got back in the church, the church I grew up in, mm-hmm. and started taking it seriously. And no, not, not too big of a coincidence that that's when my writing really started to take off. Oh. Mm-hmm. It really wasn't going anywhere until I got that relationship right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What has been the hardest thing about writing a book? Hmm. For me, it's not the actual writing. It's once the book is ready, it's all of the different steps it takes to get it ready, especially promoting the book once it's finished. Mm-hmm. That's always been a difficult thing for me. I've talked to other writers, the same thing. A lot of us have a hard time with promotion. It's not something that we're necessarily built to do. I mean, we know how to write the book. We know how to put it together. We can learn if we want to publish independently. We can learn what the steps are to turn that manuscript into an actual book. But then we have to sell it. Then we have to promote it. That's just not in a lot of our DNA, certainly isn't in mine. Mm-hmm. I'm really having to learn how to be able to promote the book, and what works, what doesn't, mm-hmm. what to do to keep the book in front of people. And to, it's more than just, okay, when do I write the next one? Is it before I can even write the next one? How do I, what, how do, I do right by this one that I've got in my hand? So promotion has been the most difficult thing for me, learning all the other non-writing aspects of Okay. What do you have planned for 2020, and are you going to the CBLR this year? Yes, I am. I'm definitely going back to the CBLR. <laughs> rapidly becoming one of my favorite conferences. I mm-hmm. love it. Is that it's a great event? I, mean, I can't say enough good things about it. So I definitely plan to be back there. Unless something major happens, I'm going to be back at the CBLR mm-hmm. come October. And one of the things that I have in mind is since. October is marking my 20th year in the literary game. I want to do something to mark, to commemorate that anniversary. I'm trying to think mm-hmm. of exactly how to do, how best to do that. By the time CBLR rolls around, I'll have that in hand. But I definitely want to do something special to celebrate 20 years in the industry. I do have other books that I want to get out. There's one I've been working on that actually moves forward directly from like a brother. The title I've worked, I'm working on for that one is called Female Problems. One of the supporting characters in Like a Brother, Eric, who's the only biological child of the couple who mentored all, like all of the adopted siblings, mm-hmm. he has a role to play. And he's the best friend of Jeremiah, the oldest one. And I mean, Eric has, has his little piece of the action in Like a Brother, but not a whole lot. So Female Problems is going to be Eric's book. So I'm going to move forward to taking some of the events that I had from that for Eric and like a brother, he'll move forward from that. Female Problems will be his book. And I'm thinking of two other books after that, where two of his, of his close friends will each get their own book. So basically, all three of those books will be those three men, those three Christian men and their friendship, and the things that they're going through. So I chose the title Female Problems because in the conversation I overheard, actually, I heard two or three young men talking about of talking about dating, but they weren't saying girls or any other term I would think that the young men would use 
and talking about the opposite sex, they kept saying females. I'm like, what, he's a Lion King or something? What's this? <laughs> Why is he that too? But it just stuck in my head, wait a minute, female problems. I mean, I've heard that term used in a whole different connotation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I'm thinking that actually kind of fits what I'm writing about here because all three of these men that I'm writing about are definitely having problems with the females in their mm -hmm. life or the lack thereof. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, yeah, I'm going to take that and run with it. And it seems to be working. Every time I mention that title or something, I'd be like, oh, what? <laughs> it's the reaction I, I wanted to get. Mm -hmm. like, it's definitely getting attention. That's what you want your, for your title to do, is to grab somebody's interest right, and right. make them want mm -hmm. to find, at least find out what the, what the book is going to be about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. So definitely, that's, that's coming out sometime in 2020. Okay. okay. What do you do when you're not writing? Right now, I've got a day job. I work for a nonprofit called Beautiful Gate Outreach Center. I actually do HIV prevention counseling. Mm -hmm. And I've been doing that for hmm, about 17 years now. Mm -hmm. That's my day job. And if I'm not writing, then I'm editing for other authors. Or, mm -hmm. but, yeah, but right now the day job is, is the HIV counseling, which is something I kind of fell into. never expected to do any kind of counseling work, but it is very fulfilling. Mm -hmm. Where did your love of books, reading, and writing come from? Definitely my mother. She read to us, from, me and my sister, from the time I can remember. Probably, probably in the womb. Mm, as far as sure. I can remember, I've always, I've always been around books. I think I could actually read books for myself by the time I was maybe three or four. I could, I could read that little kid's books for myself. Mm -hmm. I've always enjoyed reading. So you're not going to see me too far from a book. I mean, that's why places like CBLR can be dangerous. I can't be around all those books mm -hmm. and not buy mm -hmm. way too many. Yes, I did this year. <laughs> what? Oh, so, yeah, definitely came from my mother. Yes. What do you like to read in your free time? I like to read, actually, the kind of books that I write. I like to read Christian fiction. I read like a wide variety of authors. Like right now, I'm reading one by an author named Jan Caron. She writes about a fictional small town called Midford, North Carolina. I'm finding those books rather interesting. The main character in those is Father Tim, who is an Episcopalian priest. I, I didn't know much about Episcopalians, but the way she does these characters, they're, mm -hmm. they're alive and fun to, like they're fun to read. Those are the kinds of books I like to, I, I like to be surprised by. Oh, okay, I didn't expect I'd like this, but this is great. I read those kinds of books. I will read some science fiction. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I grew up reading a lot of comic books. But you name it, I'll probably read it. But the only things I, I don't really read would be like basically like pornography and stuff like that, or mm -hmm. street kitchen, or like a lot of guns and violence. I can't handle either one of those. Mm -hmm. But pretty much any other genre, I'll give it a shot. Okay. What are you currently reading right now? <laughs> right now. <laughs> yeah, this, this is the guy I was mentioning. It's called In This Mountain. Okay. There's a whole series of these Midford books that I've been, it's the seventh one. They're, it's very interesting. Like she really makes this fictional town look, look look and feel like a real place. That's the kind of writing I want to do. I want to be able to grab people with the work that I do, get them as immersed in my, in my writing as I am, reading books like hers, things like Frank Peretti, things like other authors, like many of the authors who I get to hang out with at CBLR. That I want to catch people the same way those kinds of books catch me. Mm -hmm. What is the best way to market your books? I think I do pretty well on Facebook. I really don't have, I'm on Twitter, but I'm, I don't do a whole lot of time on Twitter. I really need to work on that. But word of mouth does, it does pretty well. Mm -hmm. But any author needs to have a website. If you don't have one, you're, you're going to be struggling. You need to have a website so people can have some place mm -hmm. to go to that isn't Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or whatever your favorite social media is. Mm -hmm. if, if for any reason, there's no access to that particular social media for any length of time, what happens then? So you have to have something of your own to direct people to. You can't count on Amazon to be there forever, so you have to have your own website so that people can know where to go to find out more about your work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The online is a huge thing for me. Okay. How do you select your characters? A lot of times I'll take a trait from this person I know, another trait from that person I know. Sometimes I'll, I might walk by somebody on the street. Maybe I'll see something about them, some characteristic or hear them say something. I might like borrow that phrase or 
that description or what have you. Basically, all my characters are composite of a whole bunch of people. And that, a lot of times I'll have people say, well, yeah, that character reminds me of myself. I'm like, well, thank you very much. <laughs> I didn't just grab you and drop you into a book. I just happened to make a composite of a whole bunch of people that they came out looking like you. <laughs> but that, so that, but that is a high compliment to me. If I write, if I come up with a character and somebody sees themselves in it, that means I've done yeah. my job. Mm -hmm. Amen. What do you consider to be your best accomplishment? Hmm. Good question. I have to say finishing the first book and just getting it out there. Hmm. Because my first notion was once I got a book finished, I figured I'd get it into the hands of a publisher. They publish it for me. They make me rich, put me on Oprah, easy street. <laughs> I got disillusioned about that real quick. <laughs> but then, then I learned how to self publishing. So, and it took me a while to really take two of them, you know what, I can do this. So I think my greatest accomplishment is getting to whom much is given together. I and mean, after so much time saying, no, I'm not gonna do it. I say, I'm just gonna keep sending it to these different publishers until I find the one that, who's ready to take it on. But I think yeah, the, my best accomplishment is getting out of, the, of that safety zone. Like, okay, I'm just gonna do it this way and that's the only way I can do it. And taking a chance on doing it for myself, which I think is where God wanted me all along, but I just had to get there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What projects are you working on right now? Uh, putting the finishing touches on female problems. I'm looking at the next two books to, see, to make sure that I've got everything I need to get those, to go right into those when the time comes. I found out that if I don't organize, if I don't, if I don't, have, if I don't have things plotted out like that, I'm, I'm never going to get it done. Mm -hmm. So I'm making sure the female problems and the two other books in that trilogy are all lined up so that when I'm ready to get to the second one, then when I'm ready to go from that one to the third one, it'll be a smooth transition. Mm -hmm. I'm also looking to, I, I, every now and then I've got a whole file full of ideas. Every now and then I'll look into that file if I need a, a spark or something I'm working on to see what I might want to go into next after I get done with whatever I'm working on. Mm -hmm. There's always something I can, that I can put out there. Then every now and then I get invitations to participate in different anthologies. So I'm always looking to see if any of those are a good fit. So there's two or three of those invitations I have to look at and see if I want to be a part of it. Yeah. If I'm able to be a part of it, that's the thing. Mm -hmm. If I'm going to commit to something like that, I want to make sure that I don't shortchange whoever's in charge mm -hmm. of that anthology. I want to be able to, I want to be able to say, okay, yes, I can do it. And I, can make the, I can make the time commitment that you're asking for. So if I can't do that, that's a major reason why I don't commit to some because I know I wouldn't have enough time to do it right. Mm -hmm. How can readers get in touch with you? Yeah, well, I'm, well, I'm easy to find on Facebook. Just have to, all you have to do is put my name in, Maurice M. Gray Jr. And I have, I, I mentioned my website, www.writethevision.biz. And I can always be reached by email, writevision2000 at yahoo.com. Those are the easiest ways to catch up to me. I'm always doing something online. <laughs> the, the, okay. Facebook, the Facebook message, go to my website, my email. You'll get to me pretty quickly with those three methods. Okay. Let me ask you a question. Um, how would you like to, who would you like to collab with you could collab with any other author, who would you like to collab with? That is a good question. But I've already had a collaboration with one author who I really admire, Jacqueline Thomas. Somewhere back around 2003, I believe it was, we were both in the same anthology. So I have had a chance to collaborate with her, with Victoria Christopher Murray, and with a bunch of other great authors. But if I can, is what I'm trying to think, anybody else? Actually, I was like, this, this would probably be a little out there for my writing style, but I would like to, I wouldn't mind trying to collaborate with Walter Mosley. I would love to see what I could do with, with a prolific writer like yeah. that. Because he's just so far ahead of the game as, like, as, like, as far as I'm concerned. I would love to see what I could contribute to a, to a collaboration with someone like that. Mm -hmm. I've been reading his books for years. Mm -hmm. I actually did get to meet him once. He is very pleasant to, to talk to in person, very encouraging to other authors. So yeah, if I could collaborate with anyone, I'd probably choose Walter Mosley. Okay. Is there anything else you would like to add before we close? I would just say to any, anyone out there who's thinking about writing a book, 
Stop thinking about it and start doing it. The best way to, to get into it is the way I did to start writing down your ideas. And if, if, if he hit a brick wall and said, like, okay, I can't go any further, what do I do next? That's when he reach out to somebody as a, who, who's already done it or who's who, going to help you along the way. But the best way to get started is just to start writing, put your idea down. Don't try to get it perfect right off the bat. Just write it down and get it out of your head. That's the best way to start. It. And once you get that started, then you'll be able to take it from there. Okay, well, this is as far as I can get on my own. Let me figure out who can help me get to the next level. But definitely just start writing. That's the only way to do it. Okay. All right. I would like to thank you for coming in today. Um, okay. I really appreciate it. No problem. Glad you had me. All so right. Fun. This is Queenie Clam with Queenie's Book Talk and Reviews. Happy reading. Bye, y'all.